Alright, uh, good morning everyone, good night for the people in the western side of the world, and welcome to U7, uh, U8, Dana uh, Um Before I begin, there is something really important that I want to do. So this game has English and Japanese voiceovers, so I was one like, I, I was wondering if we should play it with the English voice or Japanese. Like in terms of speed, it doesn't really matter, but like probably people like anime that much that we should probably use the Japanese voice language. So if anyone has some preferences, then I can set it up right now. I can do it later as well. I mean, doesn't really change that much. People didn't don't really like the English voice, but yeah. Uh, I guess I'm going. I'm going Japanese because that's what I'm usually playing with. Okay. Also, yeah, you didn't see that. That's a glitch that I get right there. Anyways, um, so we're going to. Do this run on easy mode. Yeah, we're going to do this run on easy mode because it's pretty much the fastest one. Even if it's like pretty easy in the beginning, the later later on you will be in a heavy disadvantage, and there is a possibility that I can just die instantly at one point. So, um, yeah, that's all the explanation that I want to do. So. Uh, I'm going to start in three, two, one, go. Okay, um, so in Use 8, we're going to play as our main character, Adol. Um, he is, his description is he's an adventurer. That's all that you really need to know. And there's no much backstory behind him. I mean, there has been a couple of games, but. Most of the time, Adel just stumbled into things and then, yeah, bad stuff happened most of the time. But at this point in the timeline, he's well known to be an adventurer. Okay, so the main movement that I'm going to do is I'm going to do jump uh, rolls. It's pretty much the fastest movement most of the time. Sometimes I will just jump regularly. Um, mostly on slopes and staircases. And the reason for that is, um, yeah, this game has quite interesting mechanics. Anyway, so in the story, what we're going to do here is we're just patrolling on the ship, going for the next adventure. And now, bad stuff is happening. And that's the first fight that we're going to do. So we're fighting a large squid. Um, I won't reveal the name of this monster uh, as of now. He will play an important role later on in the story. Uh, this is basically just a fight, a fight to a tutorial for the, how to get used to the controls. So you can do aerial attacks, you can do um, standard attacks, and you have a combo, basically. Also, there's some mechanic right there that I just did, even though that was kinda accidentally. Um, so if you do do if you do a dodge roll or if you do a, or if you do a guard um, at the right time, you will get some extra benefits. Uh, a flash move is if you avoid it at the right time, you can just um, like everything slows down and you're much much faster. And then there is flash guard that you can do that gives you increased damage. Basically. So. We defeated the squid basically, but uh, yeah, the ship got destroyed and now we are on a small island. We currently don't know what the island is and how we actually got there, but that's fine. Um, so this game has quite a lot of cutscenes and I'm going to skip all of them except for this one, just for the memes. Because that is the best scene by the way in this game. And we're going to skip this one. So now we can switch between characters. And the girl that we've met before is uh, Laksha. We've seen her in the ship where she is 
on uh, and yeah the game just doesn't show anymore uh, wait I think we should just wait for a minute until like everything is working properly okay let me check on what's happening hmm? oh and you just click At least, like, I can now explain some stuff. Um, so, what the story is all about. So, we were just on an adventure, our ship crashed, and now we are on this island. And yeah, I think I can just continue. And now we are trying to find people that are actually alive on this island, or people that survived the crash site. So, now we are on this small inlet I would say and we're just having a peaceful time and try to find gather some stuff so we don't uh, hunger so then we go into this cave and we realize wait there is something interesting in there probably and that's the water drop cave um, and here is Basically, the thing that we, uh, most important thing that we have to do, we have to gather some stuff here. Um, technically, none of those items are important, especially the leather armor. We are not going to equip anything that is uh, defense re uh, defense related because there is an item later on that requires just uh, having as low HP as possible. But we are going to get it a little bit. On. So, now right now we have figured out, okay, there have been people on this island before, and they're pretty much dead at this point. And this is the first real boss fight that we're going to do. Uh, and that's basically the main mechanic for a boss fight. So we try to dodge things and do a flash guard right away. This gives us like the maximum DPS that we can do onto bosses. And like in the beginning they're pretty easy to do and that's basically the core mechanic when it comes to fighting so we're going to see that like a lot of time and now we found the captain of the ship uh, captain Barbarossa so um, he tells us yeah we should find more people I mean that's basically the story at the, uh, of the game at this point and what we're going to do is now we're trying to get a little bit into the islands so also yeah I could have gone for this uh, from that there but that's fine okay and as soon as we get to a small part of the map you will see something is not right on this island and all of a sudden we're fighting a big dinosaur um, so this is um, Avocado, we don't know how to pronounce his name at this point, because nobody really, really does that. And we also found a character called Sahad, and he is our main damage dealer for a big part of the run. And now he joins our party, because he found... He wanted to find some other people as well. Now we go back with him, and then after that we are heading off to bed, and yeah, we continue our journey. And now this is another tutorial where it just basically explains so certain things um, that you can do, especially fishing. Fishing is the most important aspect of this game. If you don't believe me, that's fine, because it really is. So, fishing is pretty easy. Um, they just point it to the fishes and then you get the mesh axe. I mean, if you play Pokemon before, then you know how this works. And now, we get some basic stuff, such as creating potions, upgrading our weapons. That doesn't really matter in the beginning, but um, when we get a couple of more people into our island and 
Yeah, that's fine. Also, I sh I actually should have just left here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to ex explore the southern part of this region a little bit. That's why we're changing directions. If we would go uh, further after fighting this dinosaur, we wouldn't be able to go further. So, that's our only... Uh, that's like the only thing, place where we can go right now. So the next thing is, so there are like obstacles throughout the island and we have to rescue a couple of people to actually clear them. Which is another tutorial by the way. Okay, um, so after we cleared the obstacle, we're going to the southern shore to check out how the place looks, uh, like how, the I how big the island is supposed to be. And while going to the south, we've, we're going to find another member. And let me actually check something real quick. There's something not correct with this setting. Something. No, it's fine. Okay. And that is Allison. Allison is a really helpful member. Um, so she basically thinks she's useless, but she's going to craft some accessories. And that's, but that's not even her strongest point at the game. Um, so there will be some other events coming up where we have to defend our small little camp. And that's where she's mostly useful for. But I will explain when we get to the point. So now we are going to another place. Now that we have rescued Allison, we could co actually continue to this direction. And as, you may, as you've seen, we're not going to kill any enemies at all because the experience at the beginning like, doesn't really matter at all. Or at least like it hasn't been tested it out that much, but like for easy it doesn't really matter from like any higher difficulty It makes a big difference because when you're like a lower level than the enemy then you will uh, You will deal less damage That's basically how you, they gate you to defeat like super strong enemies in the beginning And here's the first and basically the only skip in the game that we're going to do Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to kill those and then we are going to a triple, uh, like a triple air aerial attack with Sahad and then into a special. Sometimes it doesn't want me to do that. So, yeah, but that should be fine. What this does, it basically lets us um, uh, skip like a really big part of the game. Which we have to visit anyways, because this is glitchless. Um, there are a couple of things that you can, like, that you're normally not supposed to do, but you can basically do it, you can just do it without any glitches. Um, okay. Okay, so... Now what we're going to do here is, also those slowdowns are kind of irritating me. So now we're exploring a part of the island that we're not supposed to do and the game is slowing down massively. I don't like this. Um, okay, we actually have to change something here. And now the game is not showing up and it should come up. Uh, or it doesn't. Hold on, can you hold the timer? I shall uh, uh, I shall full screen it. Okay, so the reason why a setting in this game is super important is because this game on PC is not as stable as uh, some people hope to be. When we did the tests yesterday, like the game was working perfectly fine, but now it has just random slowdowns at points where I can't really explain why it's happening. And supposedly full screen fixes that, 
but um, sometimes it still doesn't. Uh, I guess the game is still not. Huh? Uh, yeah, kind of window too. Okay. Um. Yeah. I'm. Guess I'm going to do window mode and continue. But the slow one is still. Okay. It's kind of crazy though. Okay, that actually got worse. Uh, okay. I think I figured out what's happening. Um, let me change this. Okay. And that should be better, I think. Okay, yeah, it is. Or it's not. Uh, okay. Alright, I guess we're going for a wild ride on this one. Uh, okay. So, anyways. So what we're going to do is now, we're... We have found this uh, high plateau where we found a letter from a person called T. And this guy is... Probably a survivor on this island, but we don't know it at this point. So, yeah. And then there is this huge uh, gap between the mountain and this place. Um, this will be important later on as well. I guess I, I'm just gonna know this. Right, I guess, yeah, in that point. And the reason why we actually did this skip is to get another character called Yumo. And Yumo is quite over leveled at this point in the game. Again, we are not supposed to be here, and he's already level 20, so and our party's like 8 and 9, maybe. Okay. So, he will be helpful, and he is the main reason why most of the early game bosses are super fast. And now we're in the Eurogo Valley where we have to go explore this cave as, as well. And we kind of want to reach the other side because, uh, again, we want to explore the whole island to s check where we can go. So we're going to do that. and. The gimmick on this area is it has an outside area where everything is nice and this dark inside area that we're that we supposed to supposedly need an item for that and yeah what we're going to do is we're going to fight this guy and this is Lombrius. Lombrius is a very easy boss on like the lower difficulties. But like on uh, on Inferno, that one is possibly the worst boss in the entire game. And the reason for that is um, so he's basically a one with, uh, with like five enemies. And first of all, we just uh, destroy the smaller ones, and Yumo does a really good job on that, which is quite good actually. And after we defeat all the small ones, the, the big one comes around. And timing it with a flash card, you can just uh, do a lot of damage. And then we got another flash card right there, the flash move. But yeah, like most of the early game bosses, it's just a DPS race. Okay, we did it a little bit too early here. And this fight is very easy. Um, there's nothing much I have to explore here. Just if you really want to hit as fast as possible. Um, so, 
So every character has some sort of special skills that I previously didn't mention. Um, they cost between 10 and 50 SP. I don't know what the skill does. And in that case, um, we use Yumo's cheaper skill. Okay. So instead of continuing through this cave, we're actually going back to the to this place, and we're doing now this dungeon in the correct order. And Towering Coral Forest is... It's basically your entry forest area in any RPG. But su surprisingly, like, even though this area is large, it's... It's pretty short to get, like, to the first mini-boss. Which is a ser Serpentius, I think that's his name. And... Because we are we have Yumo at this point, he will die super quickly. Okay. Okay, and Okay, so this slow okay, so the slowdown is not cool. Anyways. Um this fight is very easy with Yumo. Um you can't hit him on three parts of of him, like you can hit him in the front and in the back. And here's where we get our first adventure gear, the Grip Gloves. This lets us climb up vines. And this is a very important item because there are plat platforms that we can't really skip. So yeah, then that's why we have to get those. The other chest that spawned after Lombrius, lom we don't really need it. So. That's cool. Okay, uh, that's other thing. Throughout exploring, you get some new visit points, and later on you can p a teleport to them. But at the beginning, it's not really useful. Okay, so we got the message from the parrot that you really didn't see at this point that there is an attack onto the camp. So we have to defend it right now. And they're called interceptions. Because it basically intercepts us every time that we're that we're going wanting to do stuff. Uh, interceptions in the beginning is pretty simple. It's just just crushing enemies as fast as possible. And at the beginning we're going to use a uh, black shot, even though it's not really necessary. We can also switch to Yumal or Adol. But Laxia does her job pretty well in the first interception. Um, this interception has three waves. And for the first two waves I'm going to stay as Laxia while switching to Yumal sometimes. Mostly uh, switching to humor is more consistent than using Axia. Also, I told you the order where those enemies spawn. And we have to defend this fence right there, but like at the in the beginning it's not a big issue at all. For this one to spawn. Okay. Good. So a good time for the first interception is uh, around two minutes, probably like a 202, 201. The sub two is really good, but I don't really expect to get it because it pretty much requires perfection at this point. Okay, so the final wave sometimes have bosses and sometimes they don't. This interception doesn't have a doesn't have a boss because it's just another tutorial basically. And so you may have uh, seen that like certain NPCs just spawned and did some stuff, which which is why 
certain characters are important, and I did not want to do that. Okay, that's fine. Okay. After we've cleared this wave, the last one comes up, and I mean the the big guy right there is our boss monster supposedly, but because we got Moon that early on, he dies relatively quickly. Okay, so, yeah. Anyways, now that we clear this interception, we're getting some rewards, and the rewards don't really matter, because at this usually you get an A rank here. Okay, I got a double S, that's good. Okay. Anyways, after defending the camp, we just go back to this place. So, these crystals are warp points, uh, if you may have noticed. And there are certain warp points that I really want to take. I mean, this one, of course, because it's the midway point, and you really don't want to go to the same area. Twice. But we only have to do it here. Okay. So after getting past this waterfall, we're going to get grab an item called the Red Cape. And the Red Cape is basically an item that does some um, that increases your damage. Um, Whenever you have low HP. Also, there is a neat little trick. You know, normally, you have to go all the way around, but just with an aerial combo of Sahad, you can just get up there. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to skip this part, otherwise, you would have to go around again, and you don't really want to do that. Alright, um, the next one is Clarion. Clarion is a really easy boss. If I didn't misuse my EX skill, I could have killed him right now. But sadly, this is not going to happen at this point. Anyways, now, he has three phases, and we just skipped the second phase at this point. And. You can skip the second and third phase too, but it requires the accident because I used it accidentally in the interception. Yeah, I can't do this fight appropriately. Okay, so what's the reward for going through this forest? So at the end we are going to visit another survivor. Of the ship crash. And her name is Kathleen, I think? Yeah. She's super important. Um, she is our blacksmith, and because of her, we can upgrade our weapons. I'm not going to do this right now. Um, uh, except for like the mandatory tutorial one. Also, I should go to this. One right quick. Okay. Um, now, during the time, Barbarossa thought like, okay, we need to protect ourselves better from the monsters around this island. So we have to build a plateau and gather some materials. That is a really important quest um, because later on, as as difficult as the um, later interception gets, you really want to up. Uh, you really want to upgrade your facilities later on. And normally you su uh, you're forced to do that, but, but because we skipped a trigger by getting Yumel and getting to a teleport that goes behind the sad trigger, we can... we don't really have to do that, but... Again, for the later stages and in, in the interceptions you want to do that. 
doesn't matter if you don't do it. I mean, if you're strong enough, then you can also defend it without having any upgrades. But that would be a new game plus thing, I would say. So yeah, after getting this support, and I forgot to activate the warp stone there. That's perfectly fine, I guess. I guess we're just going through that. That's just wasting another minute. So, after going through this cave a second time, we're grabbing another item after Lombrius. It's called the Strength Ring. It just gives you 20 strength, but it's really important. It's really important that you get this 20 strength, uh, especially early on. It increases your damage by like five or ten, which doesn't sound like much, but yeah. Also, we're not going to grab this adventure. It's useless at this point. Also, yeah, I got hit there, that's unfortunate, but that's fine. Okay, also, yeah, you can walk on those webs. And, yeah, that's a neat thing, but it has kind of wonky physics sometimes, um, if you do jump rolls. So you're not going to do that. Okay, so here's the blade, uh, the blade ring, not the strength ring. I don't know why I call it that way. And we're going to equip it to um, Yumon. Again, he's the most important member for like half of the run, next to Sahad and another character that I'm going to talk about. Now. Okay, so. This spider boss is pretty easy. Uh, he also has two phases. Second phase starts at the, at the uh, 50 HP mark. Also, yeah, that doesn't make a flash move. And again, we are just using his special attack. I don't like what he's doing. Didn't get any flashcards in there, that's, that's unfortunate. Okay, there we go. So yeah, flashcards increases our damage by 20%, I think. Or something around that. But yeah, uh, he, like, Tarantula isn't that difficult. In the later phases, he also does poison you. I mean, he does it on easy as well, but it takes quite a lot of it to get paralyzed or poisoned. So yeah, we got a flamestone, and the flamestone is used for upgrading our weapons. And this is Dina, a merchant that was also on the ship. We didn't see her in the beginning, which, yeah, is kind of interesting. Okay, and here's the first that here's the first and only quest that we are doing right there uh, to fix, or like to make our to upgrade our facilities for the interceptions. And after we did that, we are going back to the be to Beast Hills and go to the next area. Like the story in the beginning isn't really important. Like it, it doesn't really. Like, it doesn't really make a difference if you know it or not. We're just basically just saving people. So, yeah. Um, I don't like those slowdowns, actually. Okay. So, Dina gave us an uh, insect propellant. That helps us uh, clean those cocoons. So, after we did that, um, we're going to take a nap. Oh, and we are having a dream about a maiden that 
probably happens to be to live on this island. We don't know it yet. But it would be a complicated thing why that happens. Okay, so the next boss is a giant tree, which has eight of those seeds. And what it does... It doesn't really matter what it does, like, you kind of want to clear them as fast as possible. Also, you want to hit as many of those things as possible. And one you can do it whenever you want, but you want to use a uh, human special to deal as much damage as possible. And sometimes you kind of want to switch out your targets as well. Because, yeah, they can also close, and if they close, you can't hit them. Okay, there we go. Got the flash card right there to do the damage. Another flash move. Okay, there are two more of them alive. I want to kill them at the same time if possible. Okay, there we go. We did it. And defeating this boss gives us the flowing shoes. So you see the you see the mud around here. You wouldn't normally sink in there. And equipping it makes us just have regular speed on those. That one is also a mandatory item, because there is a point in the game where you have to skip a large mod gap. But there are actually two points, now that I think about it. Okay. And because of that, we don't really need to do those t uh, some jumps. Um, the any percent category before it got completely broke down didn't get it, and that's because there is a glitch that you can do where you can just hover... Uh, above the mud, so you don't, you don't need it at all. Okay, so we're getting this forest guide to um, uh, have two slots into our adventure into your slot, so we can equip both items at the same time. Now. That's all that we really need. Um, I mean, you can get a third and a fourth slot as well, but it's faster to just switch to the items than getting, getting it. Okay, now we're going to fight a hippo, and depending on what the hippo does, um, you will get some attacks in that I don't really want to see. So we have to destroy those pellets on his back. Okay. And after we did that, he comes out and we can actually hit him. Uh, also, this phase is, is also split up in three parts. So the first part is um, pretty simple. The second part, he gets some extra stuff that he can do when he's outside the mud. Other than that, he just tries to eat you. And he runs all the way around. Okay. okay, I'm trying to do... I'm trying to do a quick kill right there. Um, I'm not sure if the damage was enough. But there is a way that you can kill him before he gets even in the third phase. It's kinda RNG, um, if you get it or not, sometimes he will, you won't hit him for as much as you want him to. But that was really good, so... That was a really good fight, nothing to complain about here. Okay, so now we are at the small part of the island, and we're getting licked at Doctor. Even though we already have a Doctor on our island. Okay, so 
one of the villagers goes crazy and now we have to find him and now he just got some bruises which is uh, not a main issue okay so now after we did uh, all the things we're getting attacked again and that's uh, a mandatory one that we have to do there are also skip uh, things that we can skip uh, skip but they only give you some extra items because Yumul is no longer in our party at this point because he still has stuff to do um, we're going to use Sahad instead and we're going to upgrade his weapon to the max I should, get, should have gathered enough materials to do that so we got the maximum out of him and we're going to re-equip the damage items to him because luckily we get um, keep our items that we're using and this interception introduces us to the final uh, introduces us to the final wave of interception that contains a boss fight so and we're going to fight our good boy the avocado and avo avocado in this area is not that troublesome So another thing that this uh, game introduced, but doesn't really matter in the beginning, is so every enemy has, or like most of the enemies, have some type of weakness. Um, you, normally, you would uh, use a character that does this type of damage, but Sahad is so overpowered uh, with a maximum upgraded weapon that we can just use him. What time do we have? Uh, 38, okay. Um, so, the scores doesn't really matter at this point. Um, I mean, that's how helpful every character is. But again, it doesn't really matter. Okay. So, this wave is the most difficult one to handle, actually, because of those big walruses. They have quite a lot of HP, and because um, those monsters scale with levels as well, or some of them. Also, they are not doing their job. The NPCs are not doing their job well. Okay, that's fine. It's like it's not a, it's not difficult to finish this one. Also, kind of want to target this crap. So this crap, for example, has blunt uh, damage weaknesses. So Sahad is like the best, uh, the best to deal with those types. Then there are Slash, and then there is Pierce. Uh, slash is for Adel and the other character, and Pierce is for uh, Laxia and. Okay, so this way if you can do whatever you want. Those bees, they're, even if they're super weak, they they do random stuff most of the time. So I tried to. The optimal thing would be if you would lure them into a corner. Sadly, this doesn't work as well most of the times. So you can do whatever you want. Most of the time they will just come towards you, so times they won't. Okay, that's some bad dodges right there, but it's fine, it's fine. So we clear the third wave, and the last wave is Avocado with a couple of monsters by itself. And the fight, the, the next couple of fights with Avocado basically look the same. So we just try to hit him to an HP value. And then we just try to finish him off with an extra skill. Okay, avocado shouldn't walk that much. Possible. Okay. He didn't do the thing that I want him to do, but that's fine. We can just finish him off. Anyways. 
Okay, now quick 30 second interception. There are two more of them. And the third and the fourth one are. Especially the third one, in my opinion. If you didn't upgrade your facilities, it's super hard. So. That's the easy time that we don't have. Okay. A rank, that doesn't matter at all. So, Avocado gets away again. Um, because he is invincible. And we can't do um, that much. Oh, yeah, I totally forgot. Okay. So, between the, ni uh, between the interception and the time that we're doing right now. One of the villagers escaped with a small boat because he just wants to leave this island and he gets crazy. And now we have to chase him to the southern shore. That's what we're going to do. So that's where this warp comes into play. Otherwise you would... It saves around... I think you would save around 20 to 30 seconds. Probably around the third region, I guess. Okay, so after entering into this map, we're getting attacked by little sharks. They're regular monsters, but they have quite a lot of HP as well. So we're going to give them a little smack with our anchor. And after we did that, we're going to realize, okay, there is this giant squid again. He's protecting the island and now the guy's dead. Okay, so do we, now we figured out, okay, there must be some guy that drove him crazy around this island. So we're trying to find out some hints. And also in the meantime, the captain got attacked as well. So we have to find some clues and some people that are supposedly the like the attacker or the nameless killer as this guy calls himself and after leaving this down we figured okay there is something this uh, the killer let something there and it turns out um, there was a doctor that we saved in the coral forest and he, he revealed himself that he's the killer so we have to chase him right now and because we have to chase him the regular way, we can't teleport to the spot that we have to go. It will happen quite frequently that we just have to walk to an up section, even though if there is a teleporter around here. Okay. And here is a cutscene where the captain gets attacked and uh, as well, and he's now severely injured. And that's where we fight... Ca uh, Kierguard. And Kierguard isn't a hard boss, I would say. But doing flash guards of this guy is not an easy task, so we just we just attack him and ignore his attacks. Except that that one. That one is kinda difficult. It's supposed to be free, but yeah. Okay. Also, there is a thing, like, if you deal enough damage, you will just fly up and you can, ch you can do, like, you can chain attacks and he can't do anything at all. The main issue is with that strategy is that your, uh, that the uh, other team members can attack him, so we're not going to do that. Okay, now we killed Kierguard. Also, okay, I pressed pause a little bit too fast. And... You didn't see it in this cutscene, but what happened is, okay, he wanted to escape again, but our boy Avocado eat him alive, so he's now dead. And the captain as well. And now some time travel in shenanigans happens. Um, between the night times in the sea, uh, between like every area, Ado is starting to have a dream about this girl called Dana. And... Even though I don't support any any anime things at all, um, 
Dana is pretty much like the best character in the entire game. She's the best girl by far. Um, the reason for that is quite simple. She is really fast in terms of movement, even though you don't see it right now. And she deals quite a lot of damage. Also, she is level 43, but it's only for this sequence, so it doesn't really matter. So, we're going to talk to a couple of people. Because at this time, Dana is the Maiden of the Great Tree. And we didn't see the Great Tree at all, so where is it? So it has to be on the island, right? And yes, it is on the island, but we are not getting this point. So what we're going to do is, we're going to do a task where we want to uh, get to the end of this valley and plant a seedling right there. Pay attention where she actually planted it, because we will we will see later on where what happens with this seedling. Also, okay, I'm not doing the port properly. Okay, so we're planting the seed here, and now we're back to the adult timeline. So we're going to check out what happened here. Out, everyone is sad, and. We're going to go find the, the other girl, Raksha, Raksha, and so they buried him, and now we kind of want to explore further into the island. That's what we're going to do, also she can just pop right there, that's fine. Okay, so... Now we're going to the beast, through the beast hills again, but we're going to take the right path instead. So remember when I said there is a huge uh, uh, cliff when we enter the next map? So all of a sudden there is a huge tree right there. It's not the giant tree. But there's a huge tree right there. So this leads the path to the center of the island, to the big mountain that we're going to climb. By the way, uh, the place is called Mount John Down. Uh, it's the um, I would say like the most intense uh, platforming section because there are like big dinosaurs that, by the way, we can still we can still kill them. Uh, also, yeah, you don't want to get screwed up by those dinosaurs at all. Otherwise, you'll get knocked back. Okay. And now, we're taking another nap right there. Because, yeah, climbing the mountain is kind of hard. Which is understandable. We're going back to a Donna dream sequence. But that one is not playable. It just explains some stuff that... Donna and Adel are somehow related to each other. That will be also really interesting. Okay, so Mount Jondarm, again, it has like a lot of those small staircases that you have to jump. That's and a couple of other traps and big enemies as well. And yeah. I kind of want to concentrate on this one because not that it's difficult, but like doing it optimally, yeah, it requires some stuff. Okay, so as you can see, some of the floor is crumbling. It's easy to tell which ones are going to. Also, infinite rolling stones, that's also a neat thing. I got hit there, that's, that's fine. So, most of the enemies here don't deal a lot of damage to us, except for those yellow dinosaurs. They f I think they two-shot Laksha at this point, the three-shot Sahat. Uh, Adel doesn't really matter at this point, sadly. Even though he is the main character of this game. 
No, the reason for that we're not going to use Adol that much is um, Adol is a fast character. He deals a decent amount of damage, but it's not enough to wall or, or on to, uh, upgrade. Also, his skill doesn't really have an AOE, so or like most of his skills in the beginning. So yeah. So now we're the one fourth of the mountain, and there is some house there, and. So far, this looks that someone is actually living there, but we didn't find anyone. But that's fine. So we figured out that there are other people alive, and also before our ship crashed. Which is a good thing, because yeah, because they... Uh, because they figured out they're on a cursed island called the, uh, the Isle of Siren, and... The reason for that with White's Curse is because nobody ever got out of it. It was just a story at this point, and it was like, yeah, I don't, I don't know what I wanted to say. Anyways, okay, so this is the halfway point of the mountain. So, and as the music stops, by the way, if you listen to the soundtrack, it's amazing. So. I would recommend any one to listen to it. Okay, so this is the third time we're going to fight Avocado. His the fight is still the same at this point, so it didn't really change. He just uses his like big fire attack a little bit more often. Also, he screams a little bit more. That that means that he's uh, changing change the phase. Now he's on the second phase. Okay, so I'm using uh, Sahat's extra, which barely killed it, but that's fine, because I think I can still do it before he gets his third attack off. Okay, almost, but that's fine. Okay. Now, we still didn't kill uh, avocado, but we figured we, we uh, there was a new character in town called um, Ricotta. Uh, Ricotta is useless <laughs> throughout the run. The only real use she has is uh, wait, I should go to this. Is to just to look good. Eh? No, it's not to look good, but. Um, there is a thing with the party system that if you have like characters at the s of the same type that of attacks they do, uh, you will deal a little bit more damage. So that's where the floating shoes comes into play. So without them, at least without using glitches, um, we cannot skip this. And we actually have to go this way. So. What changed between Avocado and that spot right now? So, um, Ricotta had some darts, uh, Fuse with Ori Halcom, and supposedly Ori, Ori Halcom kills the dinosaurs on this island. So now we have to find a cave that contains it. And Ricotta remembers when she was smaller that her dad, which is also on the island, but has been has gone missing for the last two months. I don't know how she figured it out that it was two months, so that's cool. Anyways. Uh, she figured out that there is a cave that has some Ori Halcom. And she doesn't really remember it, but she thought like she, it would be around this part of the island. So we're going to check this place and hope that we find the Ori Halcom. And after we get it, we are getting some new weapons for every character. And that's a good thing. Because this, the Ori Halcom upgrades our weapons. Like, all of them gets like a much better upgrade. So, 
Just wasting materials to upgrade Saad's weapon doesn't sound like that it's a good thing, especially that you're getting a new weapon after this section. But that's. Uh, but it makes a big difference because, yeah, you. Otherwise, you don't do a lot. Okay, so we found the Ori Halcom and Kathleen up upgrades our weapon, but before we get them, we have to do some more materials. And there is another uh, gameplay mechanic in this. So now we're going to do hunts. And what hunts do is, it's instead of defending with that we're doing in interceptions, we are just uh, trying to kill the monster's nest and defeat the boss. And to do that fast, we have to li uh, light up those lanterns that are marked like the small circles. And then we have to destroy those nests. If we wouldn't light up those lanterns, we wouldn't deal a lot of damage to those cocoons that spawn those monsters. Also, monsters will usually go for those lanterns too. so. Sometimes we just have to clear up some monsters as well. Okay. Okay. And we have to do it in 10 cycles. If we don't manage to do it in 10 cycles, we lose it. Uh, like, we just lose. Luckily, it's super easy. Uh, also, I didn't want to climb down there. I just wanted to jump. But yeah, that's fine. Okay, so this is the last nest that we have to kill. And after we destroy this nest, the boss monster spawns. Okay. And the boss monster does have a lot of HP. And also it can just run away. And we don't want him to do that. And yeah. To make him not run away, it's a big, it's a DPS test at this point. So that's why we are trying to hit him. I a lot of times. Okay, he almost ran away, which is a good thing that he didn't do that. If he ran away, I would have lost like 15 to 20 seconds, depending on where he spawns, because he randomly spawns on this map. He can also be on the end of the uh, area as well, so that's why we are not going... Oh, we want him to kill him in the second attacking phase. Which we did, so that was a really good hunt. Okay. Okay, another S rank, that's interesting, but again, pretty useless. Okay, now we got a weapon upgrade right there. And now we're going to do the third interception. And this time we got our upgraded weapons, which are infused with Ari Halcon. Which also means the other characters are useful. So we're going to use Lax again to clear out those small mobs instead of Sahad. I mean, you can do Sahad as well. Also, okay, they went to the other side. But that's fine. Um, the reason why Lax is pretty useful in this one again, she has the fastest attacks, and you can one-shot them. Like the smaller creeps. And the bigger ones don't really matter at this point. Again, you're at this you're pretty overpowered. And that's why what this tutorial is all for. Also, yeah, we're going to fight some dinosaurs too. And scorpions that didn't want to move forward, but that's fine. Okay. For the bigger ones we are still using hard because yeah it deals like the most damage per hit okay uh, the first wave was fine nothing to complain about here okay. the second wave is also really simple it bonds a bunch of flying enemies so we can just use uh, Gives attacks of a flagship and then okay. 
screamed at me. That's not nice, but it's okay. So if the smaller uh, minions attack those baits, that's fine. Also, bef uh, yeah. By the way, I, I said before that there are five, uh, that four um, interceptions. There are actually five, but I totally, f I always tend to forget this one because it's not a memorable one. I mean, yeah, you kill avocado in this one for good. But yeah, other than that. One hour into the run. Okay. 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 The third wave uh, spawns a couple of bees, and we want them to move forward, so we can just uh, kill them at one place. But see, this bee, for example, doesn't want to co cooperate. That's why bees are the worst thing. And this one, for example, didn't want to move to the the gate either, so you can just smack him for free. Good. So we don't we don't want the yellow one to attack at all, uh, because he usually just rolls forward, and then we would have to chase him, and that's not not so cool thing. Okay. And for some reason, whenever you kill one of the green dinosaurs, the next spawn or the next wave takes quite a long time. I think they have a long death animation, but it's okay. That's perfect. Okay. Uh, fourth wave. Some more big dinosaurs. Small creatures. Mm, again, nothing, nothing troublesome or something, or like things that are dangerous to destroy our base. Okay, so yeah, for those uh, yellow dinosaurs, as you may have noticed, you really want to aim for the head to deal extra damage. Other small wave with a dinosaur and two monkeys, or two can uh, can be Wouldn't matter all that much, anyways. It's like in terms of HP, they're the same. Okay. So this is the last monster wave, and the final one will be avocado. And avocado, again, it's the same fight as the one in the. Mount Gendarm and um, the first, uh, second interception with the same strategy, except that I'm not going to use the extra on this one. Technically, I could now that I think about it, but I, I don't want to use it because there have been runs where I didn't get an, the extra charge. So, I'm not doing it. It wouldn't waste that much time either. Now that everyone is overpowered. Okay. Good. Now that everyone is overpowered, like, you actually, like, everyone does quite a lot of damage. There have been. There have been. I would say, like, there have been runs where. Uh, Avocado died before, like, the extra skill finished. Which wastes time in that case. But yeah, now that Avocado is dead for good, I guess we... There is no danger on this island anymore, right? Uh, not really the case. Okay. Good. Okay, now that we killed Avocado, we can continue exploring the mountain. And luckily we got this teleporter right there, so we can just uh, go back to the point where 
we fought yeah we fought avocado again okay now this game also has quite a lot of flashbacks uh, for example this guy this guy is from memories of Celsita I think correct me if I'm wrong so yeah okay uh, the second part of the climb is not that difficult actually I mean you can fall down but falling down in this game is just a small penalty I would say which waits like three or four seconds or depending on where you fell down or supposedly fell down okay some more uh, rocks which don't spawn there for some reason which is also different which is also kind of cool okay um at the top of the mountain of course there's going to be a boss because yeah i mean we're not just climbing up the mountain to get some nice sightseeing even though like at this part of the island you also see quite a lot okay so there's a skip that you can do, um, you can just either jump over it or you can do a combo right there. Just as I did here. Falling down actually wastes a lot of time, uh, so we, we don't want to do that. Okay, We're getting this warp and then we're going to fight this big boy right there called Jaisburn. Um, I'm going to attempt for a quick kill right, uh, at this boss. It's very difficult to do so and it also requires him to do a very specific set of attacks and it's not that one that I want to see. But it's okay. Like he can either claw, uh, attack with his claws which is good. Also yeah you want flash guard this so you attack him for free. Because his uh, hitbox extends to his tail. And I didn't get three hits, in. but that's fine. Okay. So after like the half HP mark, he switches to. Okay. Cool. Um, after the half HP mark, he's supposed to switch to the second phase. But if you deal enough damage, he will still land on the platform once. As he does this dive. Which is one of the more difficult flashcards that you can do in this game. And if you do it properly, you can use a special right there. And, or like an extra. I don't know, sometimes I just call it special. Okay, he didn't give me good RNG there. So I probably won't be able to kill him. Okay, so... Um... I get the early Jaius burn, that's how I think how I'm calling it. Um, would kill him right after he like after he tries to fly away from the third land. And doing that saves around um, 30 seconds to up a minute. So now he just we had just have to wait until he does this, this attack. And of course now he does this attack, so that's what you want to see. It gives you a lot of time to hit him. Also it's easier to flash guard and flash move. Anyways, now that we killed Jaius Burn, we can continue and explore the northern side of the island. And on top of the mountain we get Yumel back. So, Yumel has been missing right after So, okay. And now, another boring climb down section. So, the only interesting part in this is we're going to grab another item called the... I think the, the red gloves, yeah. Um, so certain items can give you give status elements to your attacks as well and the red claw is the most important one that you have to get because burn in the early difficulties is super broken 
like everything that can be inflicted by burn and gets burned as well um, dies in like five seconds even like as soon as you get burned and that's really important in the later stages of the game because we're going to be under leveled in the later sections of the game okay um, other than that there are like those small warm type of enemies that we're trying to get a flash move out of them the flash moving in this section saves quite a lot of time but sometimes their attacking hitbox doesn't activate at all so and sometimes they do it early so you should always go for the flash guards if possible but yeah um, it's not a big deal like I think the most like the best climb down that I had is when I got like four flash guards which is really good like even one or two is pretty nice I guess okay there is one and that's the reason why a flash moving is super important you can do it in other sections in the areas because most of the enemies just attack super slow okay anyways now that's another place and th here is a town that uh, like an Asian ancient room and we're going to take a nap here because there are no monsters and this brings us to another Dana section so in this Dana section we were just going to talk to a couple of other important people in D Dana's life that's pretty much all that we are going to do at this part. So it's just... It, at this point it's just like a backstory. Also this is... If I'm too slow... Uh, if I'm too slow you can see the, uh, Dana's spot right there. Probably like the least important uh, skip that you have to do, of course. If you like fan service, but we're going, we want to go fast, so we kind of want to do this skip really fast. Okay, and after talking to everyone, we're going to meet the queen of this place, which is an old friend of Dana. But yeah, and at that point, the dream just stops. Also, Dana got a weapon upgrade, which won't be important at all. Uh, Except like when when it's her time to shine again. But since this is a since this is a mandatory cutscene that we have to do, um, like you're getting the weapon regardless. You can you can skip it, but again, it just like glitchless doesn't really allow game break uh, game breaking tricks. So. We're not going to use this. Also, we're going to see some small critters right there. And they don't do anything to us at all. And they're also dinosaurs. So, Ricotta was, because she's doing a child, thought, oh, okay, yeah, I'm going to chase those little dinosaurs and bring them to our camp. It turns out that it's not a good idea. Okay, now we're going to switch to Yumel again. Although we are not going to re-equip the weapons. We actually have to defeat those small critters and their parents. Okay, now that we did that, we can just leave the place and at this point in time everyone realizes no place is safe on this island. Okay. So we're grabbing some items here, so the Tektite Ore is important for upgrading on gear later on. And there are a couple of those chests that we're going to get that contain Tektite Ores. Oh yeah, you may have realized that sometimes uh, the parrot uh, wants us that the village is getting attacked. Those are not mandatory ones, even though it says, yeah. You, you have to go back if that happens. Okay. Okay. 
so this is uh, Pangaea Plains and this is the biggest area in this game, but it's also pretty empty. And that's where we're going to see some other big dinosaurs that you've seen on the right side. Those are actually not harmful at all, except if you attack them. While the other of the dinosaurs are automatically aggro on you, so you kind of want to avoid them at cost. The green ones, those are perfectly fine. Um, they try to attack you, but most of the time they won't hit you. Also, yeah, they two shot you as well. Even if the level difference is like only four levels, I think. Which is cool, I guess. However, those with the beaks, you don't want to get close to them. If you get hit by their screams, you're paralyzed no matter what. So, kind of, you really want to avoid them at all cost. Okay. So now we're trying to move clo uh, towards the city, but we realized, okay, we can't get closer. And now, that's the point where everyone realizes, huh, the dreams that Adol has must mean something. So that's where we're going to do this teleport stone. And switch to Dana. Um, so the Dana sections are not open. It's not an open area. It's very linear. I mean, if you do glitches, you can go out of bounds on certain areas. And that you will do that. At, you you would do that at one point. So yeah. Um. Now we're going to plant another seedling right at the part where we, uh, where we were standing. So at this point uh, nothing really happens in the adult timeline. So but it you will see like what how big the difference is going to be by doing something there. I mean it's the same situation as trying to get over the big rift. But Anyway, so after rescuing the spirit, which we won't be talking about a lot, is um, so in what this does, it, it gives Dana some extra HP or like stats as well. And that one is mandatory to get. There, there are two, like three more of them that we have to get. Also, yeah, that was kind of weird. And since we planted the seed, uh, we can go down to the to the city, which is called Eternia. It's the same place as Dana comes from. So now you see the point why Dana and this place, all all Adol, are kind of connected, and why this island. Is like our main area, I would say. I don't know. Anyways, so this section has like five seconds of walking, and then there is a cutscene because we we figured out there's somebody here on the in these ruins that we have to chase. So we go into the building and we try to corner him. But what happens is we're getting attacked by. Some things, and we can def luckily we can de defeat defeat them quite quickly. So yeah, that's pretty easy. So he isn't there anymore, and so we go outside. And I didn't want to do that. And I kind of want to reload this. Okay. Okay. Um. So this save game has auto save feature. Most of the time, the auto save is working perfectly fine. If it doesn't, I have some save states organized for that. But it shouldn't be that. And even if we use it accidentally, it's 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 fine. Okay. So now we're going to the central area where we were with Dana on the second green phase. So after leaving this area we see huh, there's something missing there I think we should f check this place out as well 
Also, the mysterious guy is also going here. So, after going there, there's a giant hole. Um, this giant hole has an important plot point. Um, that will be happening after the next dungeon. Okay. Also, I love the slow. I love the slow dance. That's that's how you know that the PC port is super good. Uh, so yeah, I've, I mean, need to talk about like the different uh, ports of this game. Um, so there is a PSP port which the game originally got released. The PC port, uh, like the PSP port, is fine. It has long loading times, however. Then a couple of years later, after the initial release, it has been uh, ported onto the PS4, which is, I would say, if you want to speedrun this game consistently, this is the uh, this is the version to go. But PC, however, is faster, so that's why I wanted to run it on this platform. And again. Uh, yesterday when we did some tests, it worked perfectly fine, and now it's just so strangely slowing down in some portions. I'm not sure if that makes it problematic to reach underestimate. It shouldn't, because the current PB that I have is uh, 245, 43, I think. So, I have like 50 minutes of spare. And so far, no big mistakes happened. Okay. Anyway, so we were playing hide and seek with a couple of uh, NPCs. So we just did that, and now these lights turned on. The one light turned on. So what we did is, or what we're going to do is, we're going to turn the lights on, and all of a sudden, there is a dungeon down there. Okay. So we decided, okay, look, I am very, very interested in what this has an offer to us. And so that's where we are going to explore this place. It's uh, the Sanctuary Crypt. And this is a puzzle dungeon, actually. So we have to do some puzzling right there. So for this first section, we have to... We have to uh, turn off those torches. Uh, normally you would have to go all the way around to uh, put down those torches, but um, her range skill covers that for you. You have to stand on a specific spot, though. Okay, also a flash card. That's a oh, flash move, I mean. That's good. Okay, and... That one... Okay. Okay, if I did it properly, then, yeah, the other uh, the other torch doesn't get turned on. What this does is, yeah, we get deeper into the... this place, and... then there is some guy waiting for us. Okay, and here is where Dana really shines. Shows, so her skills do quite a lot of damage. And especially her for the SP skill. Okay. Also another thing is, when you do a special skill, then you get uh, less damage if you get hit by an attack. Okay. Anyway, so now that we're going to finish him off with a couple of specials. Okay, that was really good. Okay, now that we killed this statue, which is a guardian to the this door that we're about to open, we're figuring out that there is some more story behind the giant tree in Dana's timeline. But we we're not going to talk about it anymore because um, it's not important for the run and 
the route that we're going to do doesn't really need any explanation. We're ignoring every optional thing. Because like the later sections of this of the script is mandatory and I don't want to use special there. Okay. And it didn't save. Whoopsie. Okay, no, actually we're fine. I think we uh, got the uh, autosave after yeah, clearing the dungeon. Okay. It's okay. It happens. So yeah, the reason why sometimes this happens is I have this... Um, to use the extra skill you have to press uh, flash move and, uh, move and guard at the same time. And I tend to use them at the same time. Especially for bosses. So, yeah. You will probably see it a couple of more times. Okay. Now, this is the Temple of the Great Tree. That's where we started as Dana. And, yeah, everything is in ruins because, yeah, the, it has been quite a long time before that happened. Okay. So we're getting this wall point to teleport after opening this door. And we need to press two of those switches. This dungeon is like not really interesting. I'm pretty sure it doesn't have any treasures as well. Okay. So now we're just teleporting there, otherwise we can't do this quite fast. And we're going to re-equip Bumal with the red cape and the blade ring, hopefully. Okay, there we go. So, because we're bound to get hit quite a lot. And that fight is very easy. Like, you don't have to do that much. You just have to attack him. And flash guarding doesn't really matter early on. So we wait until we have HP mark because we because before we are actually going to block some stuff. Okay. And of course we're going to finish him off with the uh, special. Right there. And that should kill him, so pretty easy boss fight as well. Not that promising. Okay. Now that we defeated another guardian, we can continue to go to the Great Tree. And that's where things are starting to get crazy. Because at the Great Tree we found Dana. So how did that all happen that Dana is at this place? Uh, that will be also revealed later on. But now that what we're going to do is we're going to trade down some items to upgrade our base because that's the point where we need to upgrade it and not do the raid okay so the barricade needs to be at least level three or level four i would prefer it to be level four but i probably think it won't happen if it doesn't happen it's all right okay um, we can also start a raid, yeah, okay, because we're fine now. Okay, so the fourth interception is the first place where we can actually die when we're not careful enough. And it all comes down to the wave three. And the reason for that is, um, so there are those small dinosaurs, those, those small dinosaurs that spawn in the middle. Also those beetles that spawn just like right in front of the entrance. Also those big boys. Okay. 
Alright, that was a good uh, wave one, so... The next thing that is going to be is there are more of those green dinosaurs and a couple of those uh, bigger blue ones. And when there is a spawn of three of those blue ones, we're going to use the extra skill as well. So yeah, um, another thing that I forgot to mention. So again, every character that we rescued so far has a, has a specific skill that just activates at random times. And some vary between just dealing damage or healing up party members and dealing elements to enemies. Okay. So this is the first spawn with three of those uh, dinosaurs. And that's where we're going to use the special to clear them quickly. Okay. Good. And some sm smaller dinosaurs. Then this big one. And I think after that we're done. Because that's the last enemy that's coming up. Uh, okay, I kind of have to deal with this little one, though. I don't want him to destroy the base at all, so, yeah. Okay. After we deal dealt with this wave, the last wave is probably the most difficult one of all interceptions. Um, the reason for that is there will be blue dinosaurs just trying to aim for either the bait or for the gate. Also, that's where we get Lana. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to switch Dana and Adolin. And also, we're going to change nothing at all. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's not good. Okay, they are just starting for the gate uh, or for the bait. Okay, good. Good. So, and that's where uh, Dana comes into play, like in the game. So, she woke up from her sleep and now she decides to help us. And now you're wondering, wait a minute, how can Dana kill the dinosaurs if she doesn't have our Hakan weapon. So in the dream sequence and I think in the second yeah in the second dream sequence with Dana she got an upgrade to the weapon, the Adult Sphere. And what that does it it gave her the ability to actually damage dinosaurs. I think it wouldn't really matter if you if you didn't get the item too so it's but I'm not sure like how it would be in the uh, setting so okay here's another special that we're going to use but I'm going to wait until I see everyone the two blue ones should die I'm not sure about the big one though or none of the blue ones die okay that's interesting Anyways, so if we didn't upgrade it at this point, this uh, the blue ones can destroy this door in like four or five attacks. And because they're attacking quite fast, it's uh, mandatory to upgrade it at this point. Anyways, that's the final wave. So that was a really good one. Also not really stressful because the blue ones didn't charge right at the gate, which is cool. 
Okay, now that we got Dana, we go to clear the stage and. Oh, got an A rank, that's good. So after talking to Dana, we. Like, everything seems to be fine. So. Except for Dana's memory, that one is not fine, though. Okay. Um. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to regain her memory and to do that we're going to visit a place called the Baja Tower which is um, which is a library for the uh, history of Eternia of course that's a good place to do or well, to go to right so that's what we're going to do and what she can do is she can open doors with her essence and that's that's why we couldn't access this part of the area earlier okay and now we're going to climb some s uh, climb again to the tower can't do the main entrance one because it's uh, the stairs got destroyed and there is a giant red crystal that we have to deal with sooner or later okay now another thing is when Dana ever gets closer to the giant hole in the middle she, st uh, she starts to feel sick so we you know, said we are not going to do this place right now although technically we can do that but yeah it's for her sake so this is another chest where which contains a tactite ores and five of them. So this will be used for the first two upgrades to our weapon. Okay. And now that now that we reached the red crystal, there is another dream sequence. Okay. And this dream sequence tells us, okay, we need to plant uh, a tree. Again. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to do in Dana's, going back to ta Dana's timeline. And plant a tree. So, in that timeline, the tower is perfectly fine. But... We can't go to this place anymore because Dana has to help out some people. And there is a huge dinosaur that terrorizes this area. And we also have to save the spirit. Okay. And this is the guy that we have to kill. Um, we can't do anything at all to it. So what instead what we're going to do is we're just going to wait here and let him run the three but he is actually smart enough to jump over it huh okay okay so this is the time to battle and we have to wait until the spirit that we rescued lands us his powers and what that does is it gives us a transformation for Dana called Gradika Dana uh, so now that we got the transformation, okay, he first he smacks us down, and then we're going to beat him down. And okay, he doesn't like me. That's good to know. Okay. And normally this fight would be much faster, but yeah, he decided to be not a nice guy. So after we defeated the dinosaur with Gratica Dana, uh, we can just continue our path. Okay. Um, so in Dana's timeline, there, there's there's other quests that we can do. Um, but w again, we are not going to do that at all. Okay. 
so instead we're just going to the tower from a different angle and plant the seedling right there which helps us to take cover of the red crystal so we can just go past it and get into the tower okay after this time so budget tower has one unique thing and it has kinda crazy gravity most of the time also it has the worst camera in this entire game so I actually have to manually adjust every jump that I have to do just to have a good perspective so now we're going to climb up to get to the archives that tells us more about Dana and her past I mean I mean, technically, you could have done it in the. Sorry, wise could have done it in the Dana timeline as well. But. Yeah, okay, I tend to get the wrong, to do it the wrong way. Anyways. Uh, but there's a reason why this doesn't work. And. We actually have to wait until the end of the game to know that. Okay. Okay. After getting to this point. There is another guardian that protects the chest, and this chest is super important. Uh, okay. So this guy's gimmick is he has ice attacks. And ice in this game is surprisingly not deadly. So that will be a super easy fight. And if we get frozen, no big deal. Okay. Okay, he should be dead relatively soon. And surprisingly, this is a mini boss, so it doesn't have like an additional face. Also, he just shoots eyes and does his tornado attack, which isn't that troublesome at all. Okay, now that we defeated him, we're getting the wings. So this, these wings are giving us the ability to do double jumps, and we have to use them to get uh, to get from to a specific spot, because otherwise you cannot climb up there. Okay, this is the worst camera in the entire game. Okay, he is nice today. Sometimes he just uh, switches left and right, and with the gravity in this tower, it's not the best thing that he switches between those two. Okay, after we. Uh, up there, we're going to fight the... not this guy. Um, we're going to fight uh, Carvalos, which is a huge dragon statue. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, that's not what I wanted to have. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, other than that, this area is very in uninteresting. I mean, we have to press the switches and to build a staircase. Also, this chest is also important for the attack that doors. Okay. That is a revive, the Dragon Free Treasure. Um, it's just for safety, because I, I guess I mentioned before, later on you will you can just die if you are not careful enough. Okay, good. Um, now that we did the last staircase, we're almost at the archives. And what I'm going I'm going to heal here. If I had around like 60% of HP, I would still s stay again for red cape strats 
Okay. So... So this game, uh, like this boss is supposed to be a ball at hell, but... We can just... Shoot him normally. Okay. The only way to damage him is if I if I destroy his core and if his head is falling down. Also, yeah, you can flash gargoyles bullets, but flash moving them is kind of difficult, I would say. Also, yeah, you can't. Sometimes you just can't flash. Uh, move. Okay, so in terms of moves that we get for Dana, nothing is really interesting out of them, so... Oh, damn it, okay. There's also a quick kill that you can do, but it also depends on how much damage you dealt when he, when he fell down. Also, I probably requires some more testing as well if I really want to optimize it. Okay. So for the end we are going to use Yuma's special. Um, it's still like the best special in, in uh, the early game. I mean it's later on it still is, but like it, I really want to burst this boss down. Not that it really matters, but yeah. That was a good fight. Anyways. I mean, I fell down once, but that's okay. Okay. So, now we figured out, okay, there is some more uh, story behind there. Oh! And now here's the... Ah, uh, okay. Sometimes it doesn't let me walk around there. That's fine. So, since we're on a lonely island, every lonely island game has to contain something. And of course, it's pirates. And surprisingly, the pirates don't have any point in the game. It's not progressive in terms of story. Uh, also, I can actually just teleport down there. That's faster, actually. So it doesn't progress to the story. It It's just there as a filler. Which is kind of silly, in my opinion. But that's okay. Anyway, so now we're going to explore... The other southern side of the island. That's where the pirate ship is located. So, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the uh, pirate ship to escape the village. But we quickly will figure out that it's not going to work. For obvious reasons. Because, first of all, that's a haunted ship. And so it has to be steered by a Dead captain. And second of all, there is another problem that we have to face. So, there's this giant squid we fought at the beginning of the game, and he's cruising around the island, so we can't do anything about it. Also, I'm going to the wrong direction. Ah, uh, whatever. Okay. Okay, that's where we have to go. So this giant squid uh, also has a name now called Oceanus, and Oceanus is one like it's it's a primordial that already existed in Dana's timeline. That's why she is fully aware of that. The problem is with Oceanus, we can't really fight him. I mean, we have the Orialcum weapons, but the problem is he is in the water and he's usually. Um, not on a very on a very spot. So that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to get to the pirate ship to eliminate another threat to our escape plan. And that contains like a couple, like one mini boss, which is very simple. So.
after defeating them. Okay, there we go. After defeating them, we can just continue and enter the pirate ship. So we can't really enter it in normal circumstances right now. So we have to figure out where those chests are. And there's a ship slot, which tells a small story about the ship and the captain that was on the ship. So while entering the ship, it just moves away and... Now, this is the spooky part of the game. And we're going to spend not a lot of time on this ship, actually. Okay, so now we have to find all those uh, locks again to find out more about the story. Also, a nice snipe, dude. Uh, okay. So that's where Sa tells us a story about a captain that was terrorizing his. Um, his area and he thinks li and like all the stories in this uh, ships also there's some extra UI again just for safety so he tells us that this guy that is terrorizing the or that was terrorizing this is, is a bad guy and the locks contradicts to it so he's kind of, he's getting kind of confused about that okay so now th that we gather all the locks we have to f fight death itself he's called pirate revenant but s nobody can tell me that this is supposed to be death i mean it, I mean, it pretty much has the characteristics of that so yeah. Anyways, um, that fight is super easy, uh, nothing to worry about, you just try to be right in the middle of him, because that's his weak spot. Okay. Now he should be dead, right? No. Okay, he actually did this attack. That's what well, happens. But yeah, now that we kill the pirate revenant, a chest spawns with another flame stone to upgrade our weapon, and the final ship lock. It turns out the the, ca the captain was actually a, a good captain, but we also figured out, damn, we can't use the ship, so. That's unfortunate, but it's okay. Anyways, so in the meantime, Allison, the first uh, villager that we rescued, was pregnant and she got a baby, and her father also came back, so that's cool. Now we're going to upgrade our weapons for the next boss fight coming up. And we're going to upgrade them as much as we can. So that's where the tactile ores come into play. We have to use them later on too. And then the reason for that is... Hold on, let me get to this teleporter right there. Okay. The reason why we had... Uh, we had to use get that many tactile ores again for upgrading our stuff for later on. And... Now we're going back to the past because the the palace that is supposed to bring us down to the giant hole. Oh, sorry, I mean the big hole. Also, that's the wrong direction. Uh, it's not there anymore, so we have to plant another tree to to make this building appear. Also, yeah, don't talk to me anymore. Uh, there are a lot of quests that you can do here in this uh, dream sequence, but 
Again, we're not going to do anything at all. Okay. So that's the only thing that we have to do in this green sequence. Which is cool. Also, our boy Rastel, uh, a friend of Dana, is now the chief guard. But that does matter. So, now the palace is rebuilt and we can go to the big hole. Which is the, which is the old name for this uh, place. Normally it's called the... Damn, it's dark. Okay. Uh, Archaeolo... Uh, Archaeolog... Chasm, I think? Okay, also I went the wrong direction again. Whatever. Um, so, now we just want to explore the hole. Because apparently that's where Oceanus lies. Uh, is there. The problem is we can't go underwater yet. But because this is a water dungeon, this is definitely going to change. Got to turn the light down. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'm, to I'm totally aware that pro gamers don't want the uh, sweet, sweet light bulbs to shine. But that's okay. Alright. Uh, yeah, we s we're basically at the halfway point already of the dungeon. And that's where the first mini boss comes up called uh, Sierra Cantus. And Sierra Cantus is kinda annoying. There is an attack that I want him to do where he pro produces a light shield and try to block it. If I don't do that, that happens. Uh, using the special right there doesn't matter at all. Um, we're getting a refuel later on anyways. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we got Earth Dragon on Dana. And Earth Dragon is going to be our main skill after that. Uh, the reason for that, quite si again, is quite simple. Um, it's the fastest attack that Dana can do. Except for Water Burst. Which we will get later, or pretty much at the end of the game. And it's a single, uh, it's a single hit ability, which again is super important uh, for the OCMs. Okay, now we got the Hermit Scale, which lets us breathe underwater and also lets us move normally underwater. Also, there is no drawback being on the water anymore, which is neat. There are like a lot of treasures in this area, because it's, I think it's the, the biggest dungeon in this game. When it comes in terms of um, exploration. But yeah, we don't really need it. Okay, and now we're back on the palace, and we uh, like soon realizes that we are right underneath the palace. So, which I basically said before, but yeah, whatever. Okay, now that's the most important teleporter that I have to get. Uh, um, that one brings us to Oceanus and Oceanus, and then after we got that, um, we're realizing okay, o Oceanus is not there, so we're going to lure him down there, and that's where the uh, what is it called Earth Dragon comes up. So. What we have to do to actually deal damage to him is we have to throw those little pallets onto him. And pray that we hit him. Okay. Sometimes they, those pallets don't really attach to a character. I haven't figured out why it causes that. Also, 
Yeah. Okay, also... He didn't get knocked back, that's unfortunate. Okay. So it's the same raid mode, and... But this basically means it's just a timed fight, so we have to defeat him as fast as possible. Okay. And that's where Earth Dragon comes into play. Since it's, this is the most damaging ability that we get, while hitting it uh, just a single time, we can just uh, use this one. Because for every hit that you do, his yellow bar on the bottom will uh, disappear. Uh, okay. It's not enough. So I have to do it one extra time. Okay. Now that he's falling down... I think I have to do it two more times, his HP doesn't look that low, or like that low. So you're probably wondering now, after we are going to defeat this uh, boss, so that's the end of the game, right? Um, mm, not exactly. There is still one more thing that we have to do. Okay, now that we that he fell down again, again we're going to use around three Earth Dragons. Okay, and that should be the last time that we actually have to hit Oceanus. Okay, I missed the third one. That's Unfortunate, but that's fine. So usually it takes around six of those pallets to to make him fall down. But sometimes you just just don't hit him at all. Uh, okay, I wanted to use the special, but it didn't work. Oh. Uh, Ah, okay, now I know why. Well, that's unfortunate. Uh, we have to do it one more time. But it's okay. I mean, you can regularly hit him, but it doesn't take quite a lot of damage. So, yeah. Okay, there we go. Uh, okay. Dana, what was that? <laughs> okay, I've never seen that before, so... Okay, there we go. Now, that we defeated Oceanus, we got a Flamestone. Mm. So this doesn't have to be the end of the game. So, that's where... Probably the big plus twist comes into play. So we're getting another dream sequence, and it's a turning point of this entire story. First we just have to escape this place, and now that we're in this dream sequence, we really know what happened with this, uh, with the palace. So, this is the most boring part of the run. So we just have to walk forward for like a minute. And that's where we get the last transformation um, for Dana, um, Luminous Dana. This is the best Dana form by far. However, she has one major drawback and that's when she does normal attacks, she doesn't fill up any SP. But she attacks really fast, she is, um, she doesn't get a uh, 
affected by any statuses like this guy okay there we go okay so this boss fight utilizes all of Donna's transformations except for the regular one And yeah, so after after hitting his feet, we are trying to also yeah should probably make the the arm targeting. So normally, if you would a be any Dana form at this point, you. Uh, You would be uh, frozen, and again, that's not a good. Okay. okay, I want to flash move and flash card out. Okay, there we go. I'll finish him off with an extra skill. And not do it. God bless. Okay, whatever. Okay, now that we defeated the Ice Goat, we just spawned randomly there. Yeah, that's where this city is going to explode quite literally. So there's, there was this giant meteor above the earth that Dana knew about uh, all the time because she has uh, she can. She can foresee the future. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to try to find her because she just ran away. She wanted to do this all on her own. And to do that, we are going to a place called the Valley of Kings. And to get to the spot, we are doing the other entrance to the city. And other than that, nothing new. Nothing really interesting happens. So, this is still Lodinia Marchland. Which is a giant swamp, so that's where we also need the floating shoes to get past this spot. If you would do this with glitches, then you can just you can just hover over it. I mean, I can show it off later if there is time. Okay, now we're and this is this. I think the. The second last or third last Donna Sukans that we're going to do. Which basically says, yeah, we actually want to go to the Valley of Kings. The issue is in Donna's past time that only the royal family can get to this place. And because Donna is just a maiden, but not a, ro not a royal member, we can't get to this place. And what she does is she just randomly knocks out those two guards and go back to the uh, to this to the past timeline and now we're going to switch back to the grab gloves and the floating shoes to get past this section this is also a giant area and you can also go uh, beneath the mud but the main issue is you will be walking super slowly so you only want to go down if you want to get the chest, which luckily we don't need to get. All right, now that we're getting to the Valley of Kings, we just stay there overnight, and then we're entering the sacred place. Also, we're going to switch from Nexa to. Dana again. Also. 
So yeah, the gimmick with this dungeon is it has a lot of switches, so there will be a switch puzzle, which is quite easy. Also, undead enemies. So on the pirate ship, there have also been skeletons before, but we couldn't kill them at all. Also, that's not the right direction. Yes. Okay. Well So we can't go to the main hallway right now. That's why we are... Wait a minute. There's something wrong. Okay, I guess I just went back. Oops. Oopsie. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, sometimes, like... Sometimes I'm getting confused by this place. I don't know why. Okay, there we go. Okay, so there, there is a giant door that we can't pass through because there are enemies that we have to kill. The problem is they are on that, so we can't deal with those yet. But that's that's fine, we're going to get an item. Oh god. There we go. So, this is obviously a boss right there, but yeah, we can just get past this this guy, get the purifying bell, which lets us kill all the undead enemies. And that's the last time that we're going to switch equips. Also, we are going to give the accessories back to Dana. If he would remove the rocket. Also, we are going to equip the the gloves to humor. Again, this glove is super important. So this boss is quite tanky now at this point. We want to get as many flashcards as possible. The main issue with this boss is uh, his hitboxes are kind of wonky when it comes to attacks. But uh, it's nothing out of the ordinary, I would say. Okay, there we go. That's what we wanted to do. So when he does this good fire circle, we want to hit him as much as, as we can. Okay, and that's where we are going to use the human special. That one is saved quite a lot of time, but uh, okay. I didn't get a good hit right there, but whatever, it's fine. All right, now that we did that, let me actually change some strategy real quick. Okay, so I'm going to the camp and enter this area again, because the, all the enemies that I have to kill to open the door are on the bottom floor. And we were on the top, so... We... Just have to fall down. Otherwise, I think there are two floors that have you have to fall down. And since there are like the walls are kind of solid in this game, also nice targeting. I just realized something. Okay, I need to switch to this skill. Okay. So after after fighting those guys, there will be a cutscene playing. And because of that cutscene, we, we 
normally we would get his drops, but um, we have to use the special to actually grab them, which is kind of silly in my point, but... The reason why we need to grab his items is he's, he drops essence stones, which are the next thing that we need to upgrade our weapon. An optimal, an optimal amount would be around 12, but so far I managed, uh, like I got unlucky with the second one and that one didn't drop any essence stones at all which is quite unfortunate but okay okay don't worry we got one more chance so okay uh, that's one yeah, okay, that was just... That, that was really unlucky, though. So... Now that I didn't get enough essence stones, I actually have to check what... Um... Uh, wait. Yeah, okay. I actually have to check out what items I will get later on. I mean, like, the most important weapon that I have to upgrade are Dana, of course, because, yeah, she's the best character in the game. And I also have to upgrade, um, what's her name? Uh, no. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. There we go. I have to grab those chests in this room. Uh, the reason for that is there is another feature about certain chests or like items or where you can trade them up and down respectively. And a great tree lumber gives great tree lumber gives us uh, all the wood uh, like all the wood that we need to finish upgrading our base which is kind of cool so and also it doesn't re like you don't need it to upgrade it to any weapons that's mostly where scales and ores are for okay, there we go so that's all the switches that we have to do and now here is the next boss fight coming up. Also, we got our extra. That's good. Okay, so this is Bas Basilius and Undead Priest. To actually reach him, we we actually have to kill those little. I don't know what they're supposed to be. But it looks like a fish, but it isn't, so... Okay, there we go. Now that we killed all of them, we can just... Go to this place. Also, I didn't want to use the extra there, but... That's okay. That's fine. The main issue with like most of the extra skills later on in the game that the damage is not that good. As I'm messing up every flashcard, that's That's interesting. Uh, 
and that's what happens if you don't. Uh, yeah, let me wait until everything is done. Okay. Uh, that's where the revives are for. Just in case this stuff happens. Okay, that was a bad fight, I, get, I have to say. Uh, normally, uh, if you're doing it right, he doesn't get a chance to at, uh, use his ultimate skill. But it's like, whatever. If Dana would have stayed dead at this point, um, I would get a severe damage penalty in the last dungeon. Okay, so that's where we learn about what uh, this giant tree really is all about. So, this giant tree is a harboring of destruction. So, and we can't do anything about it because, also, yeah, I need to trade down some stuff. Okay. Okay, let me check. That's. I need to. T uh, Crest, I need this. And I think I need to do. No, that's actually fine. Okay, good. Okay. Uh, before we are going to do the last interception, we're going to upgrade our weapons. Okay. So we're going to upgrade Dana's weapon and Adel's weapon to the max. The main issue is I can't really upgrade Adol's weapon that much anyways. So I actually have to do this instead. Which is quite unfortunate. But look, you gotta You gotta live with what you get. So we're going to show the map because again it's the exploration game. And we're getting quite a lot of items for that. And so the first thing it gives me ten. What, what does it give me? It gives me ten uh, SP, and it also gives me an equip for Dana called. I didn't get it. Huh? Okay. Whatever. Uh, okay. And now that I did that, I need to fortify my village real quick so what I want is I want it to be level 6 I like all the higher level materials is basically impossible to get at this point and level 6 is perfectly fine okay I actually got enough for level 7 but that's not necessary at this point okay Wave one, and one more thing that I want to do is I want to equip firecracker. Okay, there we go. Okay, even though we're going to use human mostly for this one, um, it's uh. We don't really need to upgrade it, which, in my opinion, is perfectly fine. Okay, so you will quickly realize that that certain enemies die much faster than they are supposed to. That's because they got uh, inflicted by burn. And it's really important that they, especially like those enemies in those shells, get burned. But he doesn't really want to behave, so... Okay, but whatever. This guy should get burned right now, and just dies. 
And that's the reason why we picked up the uh, uh, red gloves earlier. To inflict uh, burns to IHP enemies. There will be uh, those. Uh, there will be some blue water dinosaurs that will. Um, that quite uh, quite have a high HP but a low resistance. So. Okay, that one got away. I don't want that to happen. Surprisingly, my damage is high enough to just outright kill them. That's good. Okay. Oh, I thought Humal died, that's why I switched to that. That's whatever was out there. Okay. Okay, for this, these three, I would just use the special. Because there will be a couple of enemies spawning in the middle. And you also kinda want to deal with them as fast as possible. Got burned, the second one as well, and the third one too. Okay. Okay, that was a good second wave, actually. And now here comes the last one. Okay, so there is a boss that spawns. However, uh, normally bosses are not uh, affected by anything that has the, the status elements. This boss, however, on easy. Mm, doesn't have that. Okay. Okay, so... So as you can see, like, in the bottom of his HP, he will, uh... His, like, fire stacks up super fast, but... We got really lucky with the NPC helping us out, so... We actually killed him before that. That's pretty good. In the previous any percent route, before it got broken super hard, um, this was probably like the most difficult thing in this in the entire run. And the reason for that is the uh, yeah you couldn't deal enough damage to them, and you actually had to use the red gloves. If you didn't have any red gloves whatsoever, yeah, then you were out of luck. Okay, let me check if I can upgrade. Okay, now I can upgrade this. Good. Good. Okay. Now, those dinosaurs that we have seen, they are quite different than the ones that we've seen. I mean, they're recorded basically, but they're more vicious and more, much, much stronger. So we have to climb to the top and see what's causing this. And there's this tree, the giant tree that causes this issue. And so we have to get to the giant tree, but we cannot teleport down there. So we have to do the old fashioned uh, climb there. So what changes is like, Everything in the southern half has like level 60 to level 70 enemies just terrorizing this, like the peaceful places. Especially like this big boy. Sometimes he tries to go for a cheeky laser. I hope he doesn't do that. Okay.
And yeah, after the climbing down, um, there will be a fight coming up where we can only use add-on. So if you remember this, uh, uh, this dream sequence, where like the long road where it's foggy, yeah, the same thing will happen in the present timeline. Yeah, other than that, the down time is kind of the same, so... Like, nothing much other than, like, some enemy placement has changed. Oh yeah, if you get hit by this giant beast scream, uh, yeah, you will be asleep for a while. Okay, now that we got to, these, uh, to this camp, we see dinosaurs spawning outside the tree. So... So the reason why um, that's happening is, again, in the Donna timeline, there was this giant meteor just uh, falling down. And what that did, also I should probably focus on doing the right thing. Okay. Uh, no. Okay. Red cape, athlete ring. I don't have the good equips I think I'm fine with this and let's go to equip them some skills because we didn't do that at all so we're going to use blade rush aura blade and force edge that's like all the things that we really need in metal okay and now here comes the other boring part of the run where we just walk forward And yeah, at this point we should have been at the great tree for a long time, but yeah, it's not going to happen. Okay, so after this long sequence, we're we're just uh, adult alone at this point. And the, f the solo fight with Adol isn't that difficult if you're uh, properly equipped. If you're not, it will be tedious, I would say. Okay. So, after walking into the fog, yeah, everyone is split up. So Adol is split up and the other ones are as well. It doesn't really matter with which character you enter this the the fog. It's just uh, it's just the same uh, every time. I mean, I would prefer I would prefer to do it with uh, Dana, but yeah, it's not happening. Okay, so unlike Dana, this goat is actually pretty easy. And like he has much simpler attacks. Okay. Surprisingly, like, this fight is super easy, uh, again, on, uh, on, with, like, properly equipped gear. He has a meteorite attack, like the ice goat that we fought before, but, uh, killed him so fast he didn't use it. Alright. Now that we are going back, um, Aloe gets the same tattoo as, uh, Dana. Which... I don't know the exact name for it. However, for the plot, uh, it is that 
Every time the Lacrimosa, which is the thing that pretty much wipes out every life on Earth except for like one specific guy, depending on like who's alive, um, or like which race it actually is, um, like survives and is uh, alive for eternity. So we didn't we didn't see like the other. We didn't see the other ones before, so there are like currently four people that have been affected by it. Actually, five now that now that we include uh, Donna as well. So what she's going to do is she's trying to find some answers on how to stop the Lacrimosa. And in the Valley of Kings, there was this room before we went out where. It's called the Serene Garden. The Serene Garden is somehow connected to the giant tree and the Lacrimosa. The problem is, like, it got destroyed completely. So we have to fix this by planting another tree inside there. Okay. Now, after we did that, a lot of things are going to not a lot of things are going to change, but yeah. Also, I didn't want to talk to this guy, but okay, whatever. Okay, anyways, now that now that we reached Serene Garden, we to to prevent Lacrimosa, we just have to people believe in like that that it can like can be stopped. It's basically some sort of hope collector. I'm not exactly. If if it really is the case, but yeah, it's fine. Okay, now after that, we realize okay, the tree has grown a little bit, but it's still not strong enough. So we can't really make this one bigger because there are like uh, five pedestrians. Uh, with every race representing one of them. And there is like no essence uh, flowing out there. Because of course, uh, the other the other things don't really exist anymore. Because yeah, they all died due to the lacrimosa. And now, now we're in the Oculus Overlook, which is the final dungeon of the game. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to rescue all the um, like we're trying to get the uh, spirits like of all the of all the beings that lived in the respective timelines I mean I mean like every like the only creatures that like the only creatures that really live there, or like live in the current file of humans. I mean, there were the Eternians and there were water. Also, uh, um, like some Hydras, I think. And some other. Like uh, insects, and like uh, quite a lot of things. And. To get to the places, we just have to defeat a couple of mini bosses. And this one is really annoying, though, because whenever he screams, uh, you get knocked back. So and there's not much that you can do to make it faster. I could have used burn. You can use burn strats, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't work properly in this one. Okay. So I think there is one more mini boss coming, and after that, the first uh, area comes up, which is the water area, where we are going to fight an evil reincarnate. I would say an evil reincarnation of uh, Hydra, one of the 
survive like one of the chosen ones to survive the lacrimosa and it has some platforming there too so it's not just uh, from one boss fight to another okay okay there we go we got the one skip right there and the second there as well. And here is Hydra. Hydra is probably the most difficult boss out of all of them. The reason for that is he... You can't really hit him that often. And... He does quite a lot of damage. Like, he does around 400 already. And... We have like 2k. Then there are attacks that deal... around 1.2k even, I think. Also, because he's always uh, going away, um, yeah, he doesn't give us any time to hit him. And there is quite a lot of runs where I died, but that's where the revives are for. Okay, good. Uh, Dana will learn the skill called Water Burst, and that's the strongest skill in the entire game, in my opinion. Um, it's a fast attacking skill. Uh, like quite a lot of damage as well. It's expensive though, but the athlete ring that we got after showing the map um, kinda helps to mitigate the cost. Okay, there we go. Okay, now that we defeated the first guardian, uh, the tree is growing a little bit. Which is cool. So, it's. I guess it works. Okay. And the next couple of sections, again, some more fights. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah, that's... That sometimes happens <laughs> on this guy. Uh, she died, okay. That's not good. Whatever, it's it's fine. Like it's the revives are only for the last couple of bosses. Also, I should switch to Adol, I guess. Okay. Like if you almost at zero health, it doesn't really matter, um, because you will get you will get full health anyways. That was good. Uh, 
farming up there. Okay. Whew. That was kinda okay. Alright, the next uh, section that we're going to do is um, the Minotaur section. Um, but before we go to the boss, we're going to visit the village for one more time. So there is a flamestone that we got, but we didn't really utilize. And for that, we're going to upgrade her weapon the very last time. Okay, and that's all that we want to do actually. So, we go back to the frozen path and then... Hope to not fall down. Again! Okay, I fall down. That, I fell down, that's fine. Like, falling in down in easy difficulties doesn't really matter. Only the later ones where it does. Okay, so the uh, Minos um, is, is quite a strong foe actually. Also, if you're not careful and don't block the right attack, then yeah, I think he cannot kill you the instant. But you don't want to get hit it at all. Okay. That's fine. I guess I'm just gonna f uh, fill the little Donna. Okay, whatever. Okay, now he's dead for sure. Alright. Whew, that was a bad fight. <laughs> that was trash. Actual garbage. Yeah, like. Like I have one revive left, I think. And the one revive I shouldn't use at all. The only boss that can be problematic is the second last one. Or I'm just going to get hit by this guy. That's the wrong direction. Okay. I just realized. Okay. Okay, now this is the insectoid area. Uh, so that one is just like crazy climbing, and then there is a gimmick in the boss fight where. 
those hexagons that you see, um, they can create holes as well, and you can also fall down there. So you don't want to fall down there. Anyways, okay. Uh, so nest store itself is very easy. Um, only like troublesome if you're fighting here in like higher difficulties, where fall damage actually matters. And okay, didn't want to do that. I didn't get the flash guard there. Uh, that's so what I want to what I want to do is like I want to hit flash guards while she does the dive. But uh, okay, uh, okay, I'm screwing up in time, but that's that's okay. I mean, I have yet to die at nest stores, but I will probably. Uh, that would be probably the first time if I'm continuing like that. But okay. That's fine. Okay. Okay, now that we defeated this boss, there is one more guardian left. And then we go to the Serene Garden for a quick visit. And after that, we're almost done with this game, so. Uh, okay, so the crap boss is uh, in this one has so much HP you really want to use burn strats instead, which we're going to do. And yeah, burning does quite a lot of damage. Okay, okay that's good. I'm thinking about just using burn strats for the rest of the danger because I feel like the damage is not that optimal. Uh, okay. And yeah, this is the first boss again. Just a, just slightly faster, and slightly more HP. Now that we did that, we can go to the final area, the Sky World, I think that's what it's called. Sky Era, yeah. Yeah, Sky Era is, yeah, something different. That's all I'm gonna say. Okay, it's pretty much the easiest area <laughs> out of all of them, and okay. I got. N I didn't get transported up there. Okay. All right. Okay. Now this is Ura. Um, Ura spawns those crystals that uh, that extends their attacks. Luckily, they're not that strong, so we can just destroy them right quickly and. Because the, the bubble skill is quite strong, uh, like a water burst is quite strong, you really don't have to worry about it. Yeah, okay, if I fall down there, that's fine. Like during the meteor attack, you can't do that much, anyways. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. Alright. Okay, that's the last one that we have to do. And now we go back to the Serene Garden and get Adult's final weapon, the Mistletane. And after we got that, we just head back to the Oculus, to the Overlook. Now we can get to the middle. If you would use glitches, you can actually skip this part. I like doing all of them. Also, you can also skip uh, over this platform. And yeah, this is the final stretch of the game. We're almost done with this. We just have to defeat the thing that causes it. That's uh, Theo's the endogram. And I hope I don't get hit by anything. Which... Not that it really matters, but... Yeah. So... Of course, it's like every big boss... Um, he has multiple phases. And... The phases are... Quite... Simple. So... First you have those uh, you have to destroy those tentacles that he spawns. Also okay. Luckily that's quite easily done. Uh okay, there they are. Uh, okay. <laughs> so that's three or four down. And that's the last one that we need to do. Okay. Now we are fully healed, and the second phase is just the same thing, basically. We just have to destroy the crystals. Uh, to do to this destroy the middle crystal we have to uh okay there we go No, it's just a middle crystal left. Luckily at this point, uh, Fios doesn't is, isn't a really big threat at all. So, we can just use a water burst and destroy it. And the last phase is just smack on this middle crystal. And depending on what color it has, uh, you want to use this attribute, the, the according attribute. But uh, we are not gonna play by the rules, we are still going to use Dana. Because at this point she's still too, uh, much stronger than the other two. In, but that's fine. Okay. So that's supposed to be a party wipe, and I managed to not block it. That's bad. Okay, and uh, we still got one revive left, so. Okay. Other than that, we can just cheese it, I guess. Okay. 
He did it twice, that's interesting. Okay, there we go. So that's the final boss done, but the time is not yet. And the reason for that is there is one little thing that we have to do. And we just have to talk to a couple of people. So after we defeated the boss, uh, nobody remembers anything about Dana. That... Yeah, that's the story, basically. Um, except for Adol. Now he walk, talks around and says like, okay, do you guys know what happened? And there was supposed to be six people, but there is only five of us, so we're going to visit one last time to the death egg great tree. And nothing happened here because we didn't do quests and that's time. Alright, that was great. That was a great ending to a train wreck of uh, Extravaganza. Um, so yeah, um, I know the ending is kind of bad, but that's the bad ending that we're, we did. Um, there are three different endings. There's the bad ending, the good ending, and the true ending, of course. Um, for getting the, the good or the true ending, you have to do different kinds of objectives and quests. Uh, depending on like how much you did, um, that's how you get to experience a different ending. And the bad ending doesn't do anything. So nobody knows what happened to Dana. Nothing really happened after uh, the end of the fight. It's just, yeah, okay, we can just leave the island. And that's it. That's it. And I think that's everything I want to say. Um, I guess I want to give one more shout out to the ES community. Um, I mean, those are like the people that kind of got me into the run uh, around this game. Even though like, I'm the only run of Glitchless as of now. I hope there will be more people later on. Then. Uh, one huge shout out to my wife, of course, uh, Nandina. She's the one and only, the best of the best, you know. And uh, also shout outs to Tides. That's uh, my guild, the bunch of dirty memers. Okay, and that's it for me for now. So we can go on to the final game. And I hope the overestimate didn't cause more trouble. Otherwise, you won't see me in the next. Uh, Marathon, right? Yeah, I just got it. Just got confirmed that I got brand from the next one. So yeah, thank. See you someday.